yeah welcome you all to the session uh, today we are going to look at convolutional neural network very fundamental or introduction what is the objective of this group what i would be doing in the upcoming series maybe this may be the last session for uh, this month then subsequently we may start in the month of september then what do we cover in the series of sessions first theory of background um, theory and background of cnn okay in short form it is said as cnn convolutional neural network so the field of machine learning it is a ocean so it will take a lot of time for understanding the basic uh, uh, fundamentals basics of machine learning then from that it will take uh, we need to dive into deep learning from that nowadays the sub branch has come it is said to be gen ai generative ai complete ai revolution taken place after the generative ai generally people used to learn from the scratch of machine learning from there the sub branch next it will people go with deep learning from there now in the recent days only it is called gen ai this is the way people will start moving and within there only these three branches nothing more then within machine learning there are other aspects we need to divide divided into supervised learning unsupervised learning semi supervised learning reinforcement learning four category make up whereas here in the deep learning also applicable the same unsupervised learning semi supervised learning and uh, supervised learning and uh, uh, finally reinforcement learning it is applicable for both of the branches so totally 4 plus 4 eight sectors you can study then recently gen ai generative ai it is based on llm large language models or large text model large gallery model so it requires a lot of pattern in order to generate uh, certain ideas or creativity so this is the uh, understanding of the domain called machine learning these are all the three branches within that we are not going for these all then we may not able to end up i'm going to just start with convolutional neural network only one architecture from the fundamentals theory and the background of convolutional neural network practical demonstration using python and colab homework so those who turn up homework only the people will be sent the rest of the uh, sessions link mathematical aspects without mathematical aspect definitely no one can able to do research only with the coding you may able to do <clears throat> projects you can even solve your problems any of the real time problem you may be capable enough to solve but it is impossible to um uh, start with the research activities when anyone step into research even when you are into industry you may need to do a research when you can do research only when we are understanding the mathematical aspects in and out of that particular model then subsequently homework after this or two exercise when you do research aspects of cnn i will be touching upon then finally you can take up a small research work for the conference for the conference level or for the research level research paper level research conference uh, yeah level of work is not that much tough like research paper so that you can end up with one conference level work until you gain your confidence this is the ultimate aim why i am putting my effort for this purpose otherwise there is no way to spend my time and effort even now i have booked my food and i am waiting for food after the session only i do sacrifice i do put effort i do prepare material one i am doing only for this seventh point so in case no one is interested to do seventh point you will not be sent the link after these two sessions coverage so maybe from this onwards it will be sent only to these people that's all this is a clear cut objective of why i am hand holding you beyond the curriculum this is a point number 1 point number 2 why we need to use cnn cnn useful is uh, the major applications of cnn it is useful in pattern recognition where the pattern recognition comes for example cyber attacks cyber attack and uh, whatever any fraudulent any fraudulent any of the data network traffic 
when network traffic means it, it is a big area network uh, um, networking internet how does it work how the network traffic reaches your website or your you may be uh, the proprietor of google you may be the proprietor of uh, amazon so how the network traffic comes is it artificial network traffic is also one of the hacking activity is it artificial or it is natural flow or rush comes to your uh, website or how the network behavior is there or in general network research people are doing network trafficking every other part with the data you can do for the pattern recognition what pattern what way the behavior is happening in your system in your server in your firewall or with your uh, any kind of data so it's a kind of data i'm trying to give certain example it doesn't mean that it is only for cyber security it's primarily useful in the cyber security area and to capture the patterns subsequently image it is unstructured data image classification video recognition and we even for video classification you may need to classify the video does it belong to english language or french language are this video belongs to giving certain picture if you may give elizabeth queen elizabeth so is this uh, video uh, consist of queen elizabeth picture or not you can classify like that so video classification object recognition given the um, object is it available in a particular video or in particular image segmentation taking out certain portion of the image for example i'm uh, having the complete dining table picture i wanted to segment take it out only the apples so segment taking the area where in which especially medical imaging people will be taking out the tumorous area for example brain tumor the entire brain will be scanned in the mri ct pet scan whatever the scanning they are using i'm not confident about it so they may use some medical scanning techniques so any of the technique they use finally they need to pinpoint about the disease occurrence they are not least bothered about the healthy region of the brain so they need to take out that uh, affected area tumorous area where the tumor occurs that area they need to take it out then they may magnify or they may go for microscopic analysis or machine learning analysis statistical analysis any uh, any of the decision making anal uh, algorithm or decision making techniques they may use it after taking out only that is segmentation next is spatial recognition so if you look at attendance marking we are marking attendance after soon after the pandemic almost all of the institutions earlier we used to uh, keep our thumb finger uh, fingerprint recognition now fingerprint recognition became outdated just because of the pandemic otherwise people were earning a lot huge amount of uh, device installation just because of fingerprint recognition that one pandemic incident wiped away the entire fingerprint recognition now people moved towards facial recognition in the facial recognition then it has a lot zero shot learning few shot learning one shot learning these are all the types of learning they need to use that means they cannot ask me Mm, keep on giving thousand photograph uh, poses. Uh, they cannot ask every faculty keep giving thousand photograph uh, poses. Then it will be a uh, shooting spot, right? We may be giving one photo or two photo. They will be taking live through that camera only. They will take because what is the resolution capacity of that camera? From that only it starts learning. So the moment. Uh, any faculty joins in any of the organization or any of the institution the same is happening they will ask us to give two different uh, two to three or five different postures that's it just turning our face this side that side and slightly looking at with the distance level uh, high farthest distance and shortest distance to the view of the camera only five shots we used to give that's all with that it starts learning the very immediate day when I start standing in front of the machine, it starts telling me, yes, attendance uh, present or not, or with voice note, voice note, that that's all second story. So then further within the CNN, you have these are all the varieties of learning, zero shot, few shot, one shot learning. And then handwritten recognition. Then within handwritten recognition, digital handwritten is available. 
and uh, human handwritten recognition is available. Then time series analysis, whenever time uh, data is attached, that is time series analysis, sales data, time series, morning, what would be your sale? evening what would be your sale or january month what is the sale and february month what is the sale so the, it it varies from time to time just imagine ice cream sale ice cream sale pattern will vary from seasonal uh, depending upon the temperature or weather varies the sale pattern is also very summer season the ice cream sale pattern is extraordinarily different from the winter season or rainy season so that is what time series data analysis one example so these are all uh, the way we can work with the CNN. Now, these many more applications primarily we are touching upon. So, n number of work any, any in the same sphere within the single architecture, n number of work can be executed. That is the power of deep learning. Any, even if I move on to another architecture, then we can do n number of work. So, every, instead of learning generally, we can go with one deeper instead of becoming generalist let us become specialist that is the first objective of this uh, group also so only one architecture going deeper into uh, that architecture understanding in and out and uh, even to the research level of exploration that is the objective of this session let us start what are all the major steps involved in this cnn or convolutional neural network the very first you may need to start with data acquisition you need to gain your data right you need to gather the data or you need to integrate the data you need to go for scraping the data or you can take the real-time data or you can mix with real-time data scraped data or you can uh, generate you can use generative ai gen ai for generating the data image data or any data right one is web scraping you can do or real time data or you can generate data using ai these are all the way data nowadays available there are many other ways also may be available i'm not sure so you may need to first identify the data then the moment day what you are identifying then you may need to understand domain intelligence you must have domain intelligence rather than artificial intelligence you must have domain intelligence what is the domain intelligence if you are working for agri field then if you are working for financial field agri crop disease reduction and uh, uh, what to say the health monitoring of the larger scale crops so the, yeah, there are several way available right then satellite satellite images lidar there is a, then uh, within the satellite space related several then earth analytics earth you you look at a google search engine so google earth now uh, not go google uh, what to say google um, earth data uh, data engine i'm i'm not sure about this that's all you see earth engine data catalog we look at land satellite sentinel data planetary scale platform of earth science data analysis so plenty of climate data surface temperature plenty of imagery data land satellite data sentinel data plus plenty means plenty thousands of data you can have this is one of the source for um, to work with even uh, this kind of this is what earth data i mean to say then you can have medical imaging medical imaging is in, in one of the arena another arena for example in the industry oil uh, that the pipeline crack pipeline crack or civil engineering the structural crack there are several, several other ways very uh, very intricate a lot of intricacies are there within every branch industrial automation and uh, there are industries generally i will uh, try like that industries that's all so these are all the domain or many other ways also available Face, facial recognition, many other QR code analysis, and uh, there are many other methods available. So these are all the data. Whenever you are dealing and working, you must possess adequate knowledge or intelligence about that domain. What is satellite image? How does it look? How to interpret? How it is useful? What is Earth data? So you may need to have adequate. What is medical imaging? If at all you are 
working with brain tumor every organ has tumor even blood tumor the what to say blood cancer brain cancer brain tumor every organ we can attach with one word cancer bone cancer the uh, every organ spleen prostate cancer every area we can connect with a cancer right so that is medical imaging then industries a lot of industrial applications we can do with the imaging technique the moment the person is ready with these two <clears throat> only then the person can step into the data science once data we need to identify we must possess an adequate knowledge in that domain because we need to articulate we need to interpret we need to derive insights we need to provide conclusions we need to provide decisions we need to do lot many other aspects so these are all the two pivotal work we need to do subsequently data cleaning we may need to do data cleaning sometimes outliers will be there what is outlier is unnecessary point extremities or unwanted points spots or noise in if it, if it is image noise so what is noise just if you look at the background where i am sitting the background uh, what, what is the background i am sitting just if you look at here focus um uh, this background so a lot of noise for example that that fan how it is rotating it is reflecting and the light reflection you can notice there is a light reflection these are all noise so i can consider these are also noise irrelevant unnecessary items are there you know, on the picture so we can clean it up so these can be said as one example for noise that's it so now you can look into noise or outliers there are so many other ways or irrelevant picture or unnecessary picture there would be so many other uh, ways of uh, data cleaning unwanted uh, information elimination unwanted anything can be so next certain pre-processing we may need to do then certain data transmission we may need to do so these two things slightly i'm postponing we need to do pre-processing before even subjecting the data to the machine learning model or deep learning model the moment we call deep learning means only one mantra we need to keep it in our mind that neural network we are going to utilize the moment neural network we are utilizing it is a mathematics that's all neural network shortly i'm going to start wherever whenever we are using neural network it is termed as deep learning that's all so pre-processing data transformation we need to do then the moment we are stepping into here network neural network configuration after this neural network configuration i will show you through demonstration with the visual pictures now easily you can capture just imagine neural network configuration we need to do configuration means what flexible we can change that is the meaning of configuration so what does it have input layer convolutional layer non-linearity layer or activation layer or pooling layer and finally output layer for the output layer logic two class or soft maps and propagation then back propagation what it is i will tell you just i'm spelling out nothing to worry stochastic gradient descent for loss reduction model validation hyperparameter tuning then again we may need to go for model revalidation so these are all model revalidation once we do for hyperparameter tuning we may need to do model revalidation these are all the steps in between during the phase of training itself input layer convolution layer in this in the, in this itself we can have one more it is said to be cross validation that's all these are all the major steps involved additionally the research level when we step in we need to consider dropout layer regularization techniques batch normalization technique this is additional this is mandatory this is additional anyone when they design the uh, neural network or configure their neural network this is one of the uh, visualization point i will uh, come to that point later this is another point now i am going for player one of the player tensorflow playground is there long back it has been established by the tensorflow tensorflow is one of the package in python or it is one of the organization 
they do take care of all of the computations related to deep learning that is called tensorflow this is neural network playground so think with the neural network right here in your browser don't worry you cannot break it we promise you they're trying to tell that you cannot hack you cannot crack this never it is possible by anyone that challenge open challenge that giving if you look at here it is not a deep learning at all however i can make you to understand through this the data is simple that i mean to say data is simple because it is a simulation platform animation so this is said to be non linear data what is non linear whenever when you can say it is a linear is linear non linear just look at linear non linear that's all <laughs> one whenever you have a straight line formation it is said to be a linear it could be anything parallel to x axis parallel to y axis are this are this any of this this is linear this is linear whereas these two are non linear this is highly non linear completely other than straight line pattern in any any endeavor it could be data uh, no, data distribution the data the original data pattern or it could be the result <coughs> or it could be any other information so whenever the visualizing you are visualizing whenever this pattern occurs it is said to be non linearity whenever straight line pattern occurs it is said to be linearity that's all nothing more to understand <coughs> now here if you look at this is linearly separable one line if i draw easily we can do whereas here i need to put a boundary of non linear boundary like this shape round shape i need to put whereas here look at i need to put like a eight shape either here i need to find a boundary for classification or i need to find a boundary for the classification what is classification categorizing then it, this is highly non linear look at making the machine learning to learn this pattern is really challenging look at it, it has this pattern and it starts here it goes here whereas again it starts and ends here how you can fix the boundary mathematically we need to find the mathematical boundary again integration partial derivatives this all only we need to do how is it possible it is highly challenging this is where machine learning comes into the existence any one of the input i can pass data set i am choosing this is simple simple data then this is polynomial i am slowly coming to polynomial x square x1 square x1 x2 sin x all polynomial or non these are all non linear data this can be also said as linear this all linear non linear non linear non linear non linear data i am coming this is called input layer now i come here again to the back to the point what your data that imagine these all ready that we will look at little later now i am just making you to visualize what is neural network what is deep learning that visualization or intuitive sense only i am trying to bring today nothing more input layer now we are forming the input now ready this layer is said to be input why we are calling layer we are not going to work with only one input deep learning means greed of data deep learning will eat up data lot of data greed of data it demands huge data then 2000 images to 10000 images minimum required 2000 also not sufficient for deep learning you need to rely on transfer learning technique that is little different leave that so you need minimum of 5000 plus data point if you don't have that much data what to do that question you may have just to hold those questions sir when the research level when we touch upon i will talk address about those all right now just accept 5000 to 10000 data points minimum required maximum if you provide 25000 images you, you deep learning will be much more happier so the computational effort is more that is next story then you need to work on cloud platform or gpu based laptop the that is a gpu based processor so these are all the solution now you are in the position to feed 
5,000 plus images or 10,000 plus images. When you are feeding 10,000 plus images, look at here. That is why it is called the input layer. One image after one image, you need to organize. This is first layer. In the neural network, you are doing the configuration. You started the configuration, designing. Or it is a, a kind of how constructing your house. You started now. Now, next layer is said to be hidden layer. Input layer, output layer. This is output layer. Between two layer, what is your expected output? That is output layer. That's all. <clears throat> Leave that now also. That also. Rest of all of the layers are said to be hidden layers. Not all. The neural network layers in between several other layers also you can configure. Those layers are not uh, 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 shown in the figure. Rather, they, they all have been kept here. Activation layer. That I will touch upon later. Now, after this point, you need a convolution layer. It's because the name of the architecture itself, convolutional neural network. So it uses the mathematics called convolutional layer. That is why convolutional layer. Whereas here you don't have convolutional layer. Just imagine this is your convolution layer. Only mathematical operation will change any kind of layer. Now this layer, this is my first layer. What I am doing, see, I can subtract only input output. Then it will be, it is not at all machine learning or deep learning. This is normal. Now I am using one hidden layer. Sorry, uh, this is one hidden layer. Now input to output. This is what exactly. It is not at all machine learning. There is an input, there is an output. It is called normal programming. So now your imagination can be started. Now, plus, first hidden layer. What is neuron? What is neuron? How many neurons? It is hyperparameter. How many neurons I need to keep? I can keep lesser neurons also. I can keep more number of neurons also. First number point, that is why it is configuration. It is flexible. You can change. But the result should come. That is what research is invested. Now, in this seven neurons I'm taking, what is neuron? Let us take. Even in the brain, human uh, human brain, every neuron take, is taking decision. Every neuron is involved in the decision. Every uh, set of neurons are involved in learning. Set of neurons are involved in emotion. What each neuron is doing, we don't know. Leave that. Now, here in mathematically, what each neuron is doing is, Math, that's all. This mathematics going to change. That mathematics result, if you look at, it shows weights. Look at. What is mathematics end of the day? You may do addition, subtraction, multiplication, integration, partial derivative. You may do matrix multiplication, vector operation. Anything you do, end of the day, it will be a number game. That is mathematics. So now what is deep learning is, Every neuron is going to have an intelligence to learn this weight from your image. It will be converted to a simple number game. Then this final number, one, 0 0.13 means, cat, if it is classification, cat. If 0 0.14 means tiger. If minus 0 0.007 means cow. Then Minus 0 0.081 means uh, dog. It is horse. It is zebra. It is kind of any other animal, monkey. That is how it is classified. Just to see and imagine the beauty. Your input is an image. Finally, how the deep, uh, what is a uh, neural network is learning or converting is, it is converting in terms of number that number is going to take decision about each of the image. This is the first intuitive sense we may need to understand. Input is image. Microscopic level, if you synthesize image, what is image? It is a pixel, finally. It is also a number. Collection of numbers you are giving. From that, you are going to convert it into a single number that single number is going to give you the decision. 
that's all so every neuron is going to have mathematical operation what operation how is going to happen that all slightly just to hold for some time but one thing you should know every neuron is connected highly with each input every neuron is fed with every input look at this is my input x1 count all of the lines it has seven yeah seven lines how many neurons i have connected seven neurons see clearly minus next next see everywhere weight is displayed different different weights i have seven lines i didn't even look at the neurons i counted the lines exactly matching similarly this input is given to each and every neuron of this layer similarly this input this is called densely connected neural network densely means everything is given to here you may notice what is this again it is coming back propagating back look at what is it is giving back it is called back propagation that i will come later so first this forward line we are talking every neuron is computing something or mathematical operation then the end of the game it will produce a number now i want to increase one more hidden layer now you can ask question how many hidden layer first question you can ask how many input i should have that question no fixed question depending upon your input you need to choose the model for example you are going to identify work with liver cancer just because of lack of data with who are suffering with liver cancer you cannot force people to have liver cancer it is highly unethical right so in that case you need to use different architecture transfer learning model otherwise input layer is fixed demands huge data next question in a hidden layer first is it necessary to go with the hidden layer first question definitely this question i will answer input immediately you need to go with the hidden layer what is that hidden layer hidden layer has certain mathematical operation that mathematical operation only will be called as convolution layer because in this model we are using convolution operation that is why it is convolution layer what is convolution operation you no need to worry it is also a hidden layer only here i have written convolution layer here i am showing hidden layer both are interchangeably same <clears throat> every convolution layer can be called as hidden layer vice versa is not true every hidden layer you cannot call it as convolution layer please understand my dear friends it is said to be depending upon the mathematics what you are using only it is said to be name of the layer in general any of the mathematical operation you use can be called as hidden layer that's all number one point number two is how many neuron i need to organize there is no question but this is said to be one of the research question these all answer i will give you during this step how many neuron you should have not now it is too early to talk how many neurons to have it is a research question i cannot answer right now now how many hidden layer now i have created two hidden layer this is one this is two how many hidden layers should i have again it is a research question i cannot answer now you can have any number of hidden layer that answer only i can give but your result should acknowledge your result should speak speak louder that is the only answer i can give so hidden layer cannot be determined this is one of the hyper parameter wherever you cannot fix that all said to be varying nature or said to be hyper parameter hyper para wherever you are not able to fix something it is said to be hyper parameter now number 1 number of neurons are hyper parameter number of layers are hyper parameter two hyper parameter i have said now let us see later uh, next another question 
only the hidden layer or in in this case only the convolution layer we need to have not 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 at all in the convolution layer we need to have activation layer what is activation layer otherwise it is said to be non linearity layer deep learning is invented only for the non linearity analysis otherwise machine learning is more than sufficient for linearity analysis non linearity also machine learning does but deep learning beauty is to handle non linearity and the complex data nature so we need to introduce linearity because we are not sure about how your input data would be so that we need to artificially forcibly we need to convert it into non linearity in order to do that non linearity we need to work with activation layer what is activation layer look at here activation relu tan h sigmoid linear many more to my knowledge 20 plus activation i cannot tell precisely 20 plus activation functions are there but for the c in and how many architect uh, at what are all the activation layer we need to use again research question you need to wait until the last now i will introduce relu and i will introduce um sigmoid sigmoid i will introduce tanh these three activation layers are permitted in the convolutional neural network when to use how to use that let us see before that now you hope so you can understand what is input layer what is uh, hidden layer or convolution layer with respect to this topic it is said to be convolution layer that's all output layer now between one hidden layer to another hidden layer in the convolutional neural network it is mandatory to introduce activation layer please understand mandatory to introduce otherwise input will become your image will become linear when it is linear deep learning fails to give you the better result so it uh, must be non linear we are forcibly converting non linearity if it is available it will be retained with activation function if it is not available we are forcibly converting what is activation layer this all name jargon leave now i will make you to understand look at here this is sigmoid function when your input is minus 5 you are having one mathematical expression that's all 1 divided by 1 plus exponential of your um, given input that's all what is the value comes that is the output of the activation function nothing more every activation function has a mathematical formula sigmoid function i am using simple excel sheet only then this is the formula i am using it for converting logical or uh, means converting it into sigmoid sigmoid otherwise logit both are same same uh, terminology they use alice name logit function or sigmoid function this is the function this is the function that function formula is given minus 5 if you look at the pattern beauty all of the minus it gives less than 0.5 see less than 0.5 when you give 0 clearly separable 0.5 output input is 0 output is 0.5 when your input is negative any negative you give in the world even minus 999 you give even you give minus 100 you give minus 200 it will end up with less than 0.5 this is called non linearity you are can see graph itself non linear right now look at all of the positive input your output will be always above 0.5 this is 0.5 your values are above 0.5 this is called logit output always the range will become will be between 0 to 1 similarly look at tan h what is tan h this is a function tan tan h. formula i don't know i use excel it is a tan h formula you can search on the internet tan h if you put it will give you tan h tan h function formula it is giving 2 divided by 1 plus 2 to the power of x that's all tan h see tan h e to the power of x minus e to the power of minus x or look at here 2 divided by 1 plus 1 plus e to the power of minus 2x or you can look at e plus x minus e e minus x divided by e 
power x plus e power minus x. The same function only used in sigma. But I did it was having, it was giving the provision of using tan h. So I, I utilized that. So this is the formula. Better let me keep it here. So the formula is this. Whereas here, the formula I used sigmoid. Sigmoid also has a formula. What is the formula? 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power of minus x. This is the formula. So now you need to apply this formula. That's all. Nothing more you are doing. Now tan h. What is doing here? If you look at 0, if you give input 0, 0 centered input, if you are using tan h, you need to use. For that lot of graphically you need to see your intermittent result you need to take decision which active function you need to use if any of the input is zero centered you must use tan h if any of the uh, input is uh, not zero centered you can use sigmoid that all we will uh, explore it slowly or you can uh, learn by yourself also now if your input is positive it gives positive if your input is negative, it gives negative. If your input is 0, 0. See, shifted, you understand. Sigmoid is giving this. This is what bifurcation point. If all of the input is positive, you will end up with the positive output. If all of the input is negative, you will end up with the negative. Whereas in the tan h, 0 equated to 0, positive equated to positive, negative equated to negative. Entirely changed. The function is changed. So this is also non-linear, look at non-linear. Similarly, ReLU. ReLU, it will give, if your input is, whatever your input, always it will match with the 0. Whichever is maximum, that will give. That means it, will, it avoids all of the 0, negative inputs. All of the negative input is equated to 0. All of the positive input is equated to positive, that's all. If you put ReLU, it has a function. This is ReLU activation function. This is ReLU, max of 0. What does it mean? Less than 0, completely um, 0. It is making it as 0. Above 0, whatever you give, it is speeding. That's all. This is what ReLU. See, if you look at, there is a emoji, means a kind of a meme card. Look at this. How each function, sigmoid, how it looks, standard, how it looks, step function, how it looks, soft plus relu, how it looks. It's kind of symbolically people kind of dancing like they have made. So this is function. Look at everywhere function. This is what activation function. Whatever may be your input, you are transforming, you are changing the nature. That is what activation, relu activation function. Now, this is pictorial representation of ReLU activation. Now, what is the maximum uh, in the CNN? Predominantly, people are using ReLU. Another ReLU variety is there, leaky ReLU. And many more ReLU functions are there. Maybe three to four variants are there, ReLU function. That let us leave. So everyone's experimentation can be different activation layer for the same data set. How does it work also? You can experiment. So leaky ReLU. But when you will use sigmoid or softmax, sigmoid is used for two class classification. Two class means what? Above 0.5, positive class. Sorry, this is positive class. This is negative class usually. Cancer exists, positive class. There is no cancer, negative class. So positive class, negative class. Only two class if you have, then it is said to be, um, what to say, sigmoid function. When you are you two class means what, yes or no, pass or fail, cancer or not a cancer, diabetes or not a diabetes. Whenever you want to classify the input into either one of the basket, only two basket, two categories. Two category of uh, items whenever you are working, then it is said to be two class classification. What is softmax? Multi class. And uh, you look at Im uh, Google image competition, image net competition, big, big, large corporates will be into the, to those kind of uh, competitions because they have great infrastructure. 
grid computing, distributed computing, high performance computing, what not they have. Those people will participate. They will participate into 100 class uh, classification, 1000 class classification. Definitely we cannot do academicians. Impossible. So whenever you are working, we may work with five class, 10 class, dog, cat, zebra, the monkey, donkey, classification, tiger, lion, or 10 flower classification, 10 plant disease classification, five plant disease classification, something like that. In that case, you need to use soft max. What is soft max is going to do is it will also will give you the output in the probability value. This is what probability value. But if you sum up everything, it will become one. It will become one. So perfectly it will classify your input. For example, 10 class, then what will happen is 0 to 0 0.1 will become one of the item. 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 will become another item. 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 will become another item. Like a dung, donkey, monkey, cat, I'm talking, right? It is like that. So when, if at all 100 class, then divide 100, 1 divided by 100, you can put soft max. So another layer is soft max. So for example, your input is, is equal to, you have 100 type of images, 1 divided by 100. That's all you need to put, 1 divided by 100, point zero 0.01. That means 0 to 0 0.1, one class. Then 0 0.01 to 0 0.2, another class. That is how it will do. If you have 1,000 class, what do you need to do? 1 divided by 1,000. You are one of the category, 1,000 types of animal you want to classify. Then 0 to 0 0.01 will be one of the class. 0 0.001 to 0 0.002 will be another class. This is how softmax will behave. It will be in the probability value. The function is softmax function is this. Now I cannot show on the Excel sheet. Why? Because is that zi is a vector, not a scalar. Whereas here all are scalar input I'm feeding. Here I'm feeding scalar input. Here I say scalar means what? Only one or two input I'm passing. Whereas here I need to pass vector input. That's why I cannot exhibit on this. So softmax. This is called the story of activation function. Now. Slowly we are. Again, we will re reiterate. So now just making you to get into this because I'm not even touching this all. Every line I'm making you to understand. Pooling layer I am not touching purposefully. Now logic function. Now back propagation. My objective is to make you to visualize through this whatever record for this only I'm explaining. Now back propagation. What is back propagation? How the machine is learning is the first time the input is given into the sweep or it is said to be iteration or it is said to be technically epoch all of the researchers every deep learning they call it as epoch what is epoch for example tomorrow you have exam 50 pages of work you need to study just going through 1 to 50 pages you are you want to take decision which question you want to study, which question you want to skip, which question you want to give partial answer. So you want to take your brain, need to take decision. How much mark you want to score? Just by going through 50 pages, you will calculate everything. Definitely, I cannot pass. I don't want to study. Definitely, I can try 70 marks. It is possible. That way, you will take decision. One time, you will turn all of the pages from one page to 50 page. That is called one epoch. That's all. Then you, after taking decision, no, let me try scoring 80 mark. Then you will sit and study every page thoroughly. That is second epoch. Third epoch, you will be testing, right? Minimum two to three times, you may be going through all of the 50 pages before examination. That is called epoch. Whereas here, all of the input, it starts learning, capturing in every layer. It comes to the output stage. Then in the output stage, it is supervised learning. What is supervised learning is this image is a dog, this is cat, this is monkey, this is zebra. I will be educating the model output. Here it will give some output. My original output I will be having, right? That output I will be matching. 
if it is not accurate, I need to give the feedback. For example, you are writing exam. Five questions, you are wrong. Then I must give you feedback, right? You are wrong. You are not uh, appropriately learning. This is how you are committing mistake. I need to educate you, right? That is called back propagation. It gives the back propagation. You have this much loss. You have not appropriately identified. Try to. This is what, what the error. Capture the error and try to adjust the weights. It is giving radiating or propagating that information, loss information that is coming in this direction, backward direction it comes. Then the input layer itself now changes in the second epoch because it takes some feedback and it works on input layer and again new input is fed. This is called, then now I will show you epoch. Just watch, the moment I click it will run faster. One, two, three, seven, four. It's a loss and look at here. Test loss, training loss, test loss, training loss. How much loss, how much it is. We need to interpret this graph and all. Now it is too early. I cannot talk about this graph. Just look at every pinpoint we need to observe. When to stop, stop. 298 times it started moving front and back, front and back. That is called epoch. 298 times. Not only 298, plus 298. It goes this direction, then it comes this direction. So this is called epoch. Now, during this much training, training loss, testing loss, then, then we need to discuss about overfitting, underfitting, a lot of things we need to discuss. Let us hold. Just I'm making you to become familiar and why this series, what your benefit, how much you need to show interest and how much you should be dedicated. And if it is not your bread and butter, you can step out. These are all the guidance I want to give along with a little technical flavor. So this is activation layer. Now, imagine the loss is too much. You cannot overnight one shot, you cannot take changes, right? So how much you need to slowly adjust your model for the perfection is said to be learning rate. Learning rate should not be too smaller. Learning rate should not be too higher. Always it should be between 0 0.01, 0 0.03, 0 0.1. This is what ideal choice when we do experiment for the research work. Rest all we don't uh, care. Why? Because if you give too much, then you it will uh, it is said to be avoiding local minima will happen if you foster learning will happen what is it i will make you to understand this learning rate importance you can understand only through this but i will show you L look at here um local minima it is integration in this integration look at here uh, this graph you can even understand imagine your error is here six is your error you need to reach the to the error minus three only then the perfect classification will happen it is in the hyperplane now i am explaining in the two-dimensional plane when we work on the data 5000 data then imagine it is a hyperplane hyperplane means multi-dimensional that all uh, no one, I cannot understand, I cannot explain multidimension. That's my academic purpose. Always people will use two dimension. Now imagine your error is here at this point. Six is too huge. Look at you. This is your target. How you need to do? Imagine it is a graph, right? In the graph, integration and our partial derivative, partial derivation you need to do. Successively, you need to go slowly faster you take step you will miss this point you will go here also tuck 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 five step i am taking what will happen here one two three four five then i will miss this point slowly if you take when you will reach here struggling here 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 when the derivative this difference this difference if i take too small then when i will reach here if I take two bigger steps here, 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 it will be going here, Tagal. 
then I will be missing this point. But I need to stop at this point. This is what my exact point. Again, the error is increasing. Look at here. Slowly coming down, error is increasing. Then I may not be able to notice this, this operation is done by the mathematics called stochastic gradient descent for the loss reduction. This loss, how much it has to bring it down for that, what step it has to take. That step should not be too faster or too slower. That is too slower means there is no drawback. When it will happen, slowly if you walk for the Mount Everest, when you will go, your life, birth itself will complete. Right? Slowly I will walk. Lethargically I will walk for Mount Everest competition. You cannot reach at all even in this birth. So that is what? Here too smaller will be the danger. But it is safe. But too faster will be danger for Mount Everest climbing. Right? Trekking. You don't know where, what hurdle is there. Fast, fast, you cannot walk also. So neither it should be too slow, nor it should be too faster. That's all. It, you can think that it is a hill. That's it. So now that is called loss reduction. This is what full of mathematics. Rest all at least little, little, little mathematics. Then cross validation. This I will address upon later because one hour enough today. Model validation. Then once you have built the model, how many images your model is able to capture and classify? How many images your model is failed to classify? Which are all the images perfectly classifying? Uh, for example, monkey, it is not at all able to classify. Cat, it is classifying perfectly. That all you need to capture through mathematical uh, uh, methodology that is model validation then hyperparameter one time you are designing the model you are not a god to fix everything right you need to change certain things then you need to retrain the model that is what hyperparameter then retraining then retraining the moment you try uh, once again it is said to be what re model revalidation that's all hyperparameter means you changing a lot of things regularization is one of the hyperparameter Regularization rate is another hyperparameter. Changing activation function is another parameter. Introducing noise or changing batch size is another parameter. So many aspects are there. This all through this diagram, I'm telling. Then adjusting these all, even epochs also a hyperparameter. Learning rate is hyperparameter. Number of neurons hyperparameter. Number of neural networks are I mean, hidden layers or hyperparameter. Like that, n number of hyperparameters that we will look at later. So, all of the para any one parameter, if you change also, you need to retrain. You need to retrain the model. It is mandatory. The moment you retrain the model, you need to revalidate. That's all. So, now these are all the major steps involved. It's a glimpse. That's all. We need to dig out deeper. Now, then look at this is your input. Zebra, convolution layer, and ReLU layer, then pooling layer, convolution layer, ReLU layer. This is what model configuration. Then flatten layer, fully connected layer. I'm not at all touching upon the entire architecture. Yeah, this also major steps. We are, yeah, pooling layer is there, and this is there, and uh, we need to definitely touch upon flattening layer. It is not miss it is missing. So flattening layer, then output. See the probability. 0 0.2 means horse, 0 0.7 means zebra, 0 0.1 means dog. Then multiple class means I must use soft max activation function because it is not a binary. I am training multiple animal category. Here what is happening? Then further flatten layer, fully connected layer, feature extraction, feature maps. These all we will discuss layer, later. Now look at this is kind of cat. Convolution layer, max pooling layer, fully connected layer, layer, ReLU layer. This is transfer learning, VGG. It is not CNN. It is called transfer learning. When your data is minimum, then you need to use this architecture. When your data is huge, then you need to use this architecture. That all slowly you will uh, uh, understand. Hope so. Uh, you will have benefited. I stop the recording. And if you have any questions, you can come forward and you can.